It, uh, Devin, we leave it there. Thank you very much. Good speaking with you. Appreciate you joining in uh, with that. Web of Sangvi is now joining us, co CEO of Eventus uh, Capital Alternate Strategies. Uh, Web of, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much. You know, uh, you run a long shot portfolio, uh, so uh, you, you kind of can uh, maybe explain this better in terms of how uh, one should navigate this volatility. If you're trading, if that is what you're doing, Web of, and uh, just uh, immense, right? Although uh, somebody was pointing out, and I put this out, that uh, from the intraday highs and intraday lows over the last five sessions, we've had, on an average, 200-point moves, uh, right? But that is 1%, all said and done. It just feels like uh, there is a lo there's a lot going on on a daily basis, w which I think there is. But uh, your your thoughts on how to navigate this volatility if you're trading? If you're trading, uh, to be very honest, in a market like uh, this, where the relative volume is kind of lower, and is expected to be lower because of the second fortnight of December. Uh, and usually you will see that FPI participation also kind of goes down. Uh, my suggestion or my recommendation would be to rather not trade uh, because these movements, what we may probably see, uh, may not kind of actually indicate the uh, you know, direction of the market. Having said that, we did expect that the markets to kind of consolidate uh, and that is what we are kind of witnessing. And everybody is kind of anticipating in terms of 2023, in terms of how the economy and the earnings are going to pan out, uh, which is where the market would be focusing their energies on in terms of making the next move in terms of money making. Uh, Vaibhav, uh, afternoon. Can you tell us your long ideas, your short ideas? What is the ratio of long short in your portfolio now? See, in terms of our uh, you know, view or on an overall basis, uh, while we are, uh, you know, we are in the camp that uh, at this point in time we are looking for some amount of consolidation, and when there is kind of consolidation and intermittent uh, turbulence of volatility, relatively we would probably go a little lower on the exposure uh, as compared to a longer term averages, and that is what we are currently doing. Uh, having said that, as I said, we are waiting for, uh, you know, January to come in. Uh, we'll have three budget expectations and the earnings kind of flow in which we do think that will give us an opportunity to kind of increase our deployment uh, and turn constructive uh, on the market uh, once the global things kind of stabilizes. Hi, Vaibhav. Uh, you know, I was going through your report and uh, your views. Two things really stood out for me. The first one, you said that in the next year, one can expect transition from low PE value to high PE growth. That was extremely interesting because this year, you know, uh, the kind of stocks that moved, they were all low PE value, be it PSU banks, etc. Uh, high PE growth is where you expect some transition to. And secondly, you said, while equities are likely to be volatile, returns are likely to be reasonable. So, two-part question here. What, how do you define reasonable? What kind of returns can, can one expect? And secondly, high PE growth. What sectors are we talking about here? Sure. So, I think uh, uh, what we do believe is basically that because of the correction in the commodity prices, uh, you will see the transition of earnings from commodity producers to commodity consumers. And when you talk about commodity consumers, it will cover the span of probably intra players, probably consumers, consumer staples, uh, and to some extent, consumer discretionary as well. So if you see all these segments are the segments where the relative PE from a market standpoint is higher. So what essentially we are saying is that we will see the transit of earnings, I don't know to what extent, but uh, from, from uh, low PE stocks to higher PE stocks. And in effect, uh, the effect of that on the index is basically that we may not see a pretty sharp correction on the index per se, right? And, uh, uh, you know, a headline index, uh, you know, may turn out as, as you know, people would get surprised to see to that, that it continues to perform going forward as well. So to your second part of the question, when uh, what is the kind of returns which we can probably see? My sense is basically that this year, or 2023, we will see a return or a year where debt and equity both could probably perform. Debt, primarily because you will see that capital appreciation happening once we see the terminal rate uh, you know, determined. And, and the second part of the year is when we see that all of the negative aspects of lower earning forecast, higher interest is a factor into the market, and we'll see equities kind of rebounding as well. So by the end of the year, we may still see a 10 to 15 percent rise, probably on the index as well. Okay, uh, 10 to 15 percent 
uh, rise on the uh, index. Uh, uh, so, so uh, for but that's that's the second half story, right? For the full year, the, but bulk of the gains coming in the second half. First half, uh, still uh, you're expecting to be tough. I think first half yeah, is going to get uh, you know more of headlines in terms of a slower growth. Uh, you know, uh, a crop race kind of, uh, you know, tightening the screws in terms of uh, cost-cutting measures. Uh, and we'll see that the earnings kind of uh, forecast getting downgraded by the street and the analysts globally, not only in India. In that way, I think once the economic growth kind of, uh, you know, starts coming down, uh, we will see that level of volatility probably inching up or coming into the market. Uh, it may be very temporary, but I think that that is a period where there can be one kind of, uh, you know, one crack probably on the index. But that's about it. And uh, post that, we do see that, uh, you know, smart recovery kind of coming in. Uh, and as the Fed or probably global monetary policies kind of start easing is when we'll see, uh, you know, things getting better for the equities. You said that you will consider investing perhaps in uh, January when pre-budget options also open up investment opportunities. Can you tell us typically what are the pre-budget opportunities? What should be on investors' radar? From a pre-budget opportunities, I think as we see currently, uh, of course, rural focus companies, the rural focus uh, kind of theme, uh, apart from the infra players uh, and banking is something we'll continue to perform. So that is a space where you will, on declines probably, you will see some amount of interest, uh, you know, coming in as well. The only joker in the pack is basically how the taxation measures kind of pan out in the budget, which is anybody's call, to be very honest. What's the best time to start loading up on these pre-budget uh, opportunities, the rural infrastructure names that you spoke about? Uh, not specifying the names, but uh, I would say that uh, uh, staples is something where uh, you will start seeing, you know, good amount of momentum in terms of uh, the volume growth. At the same time, you will see the benefit of the commodity prices kind of easing off as well. Uh, in addition to uh, the overall optimism that rural, because of the Rabi crop, is going to do well, and governments will continue to uh, do some, uh, you know, kind of measures to augment the uh, rural sector. So that is that is a segment which we do think. From a pre-budget perspective as well, and over the next uh, six to twelve months is a segment where you can see some more good outcomes. Right. Uh, Weber, from an asset allocation standpoint, uh, you said that both debt and equity will do well this year. At what point do you expect, uh, you know, central banks to actually pause the rate hikes, and uh, at what point growth concerns come to the fore? And to that extent, what kind of expectations do you have from debt instruments? So in my view, I think we are closer to the terminal rate probably in a quarter's time or something like that. I think we should we should be there. Uh, and post that, uh, there is a possibility that we may see some amount of plateauing of rates and then probably start seeing towards the end, the back end of 2023, uh, you know, kind of rates start to come out. However, market being market, you know, they will always try and discount it 12 months ahead in terms of what is, what is the likely course of action in terms of the interest rates. So the, if you see... U.S. 10-year also from a high of 4.25 is now close to about 3.6, 3.65, right? So even though the rates have kind of gone up, the uh, U.S. 10-year is not reflecting that. And the inversion, the way it is, is showing that uh, we may see that rates coming off in probably late of 2023. Uh, whether it happens then or uh, earlier, uh, it's just a, you know, it, it, it's a call too difficult to take. But overall, on a directional basis, uh, one, that uh, the bigger component of your money-making in debt would be more from a capital appreciation rather than a yield. Okay. Uh, Weber, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time and uh, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. The market's, uh, you know, holding. I mean, it's not breaking or uh, breaking down into fresh lows or anything. We're down 80 points, which, of course, is, uh, you know, uh, as compared to where we were, said about 215, 220, uh, still worse off. Uh, but we'll see. 18,121 on the index. We'll take a break, uh, a quick one. And as always, we'll get you a check on what dealing rooms are talking about in our segment, D Street Chatter. Nimesh joins us for that. A little later, a technical expert comes back. We'll get you uh, buy today, sell tomorrow trades uh, with our experts. Stay with us. We're back.